Hey, this is Joe. This is part two of the Schoolie rebuild, and we're looking at the engine bay here. I went and did some wire tracing, and this faded yellow looking wire here goes back to the door lock. In most states, there is a regulation that says that when kids get on the bus, the doors cannot be locked. They have to be open for in case there's any need to evacuate the bus or accident or something like that. What they've set up is an interlock system and on each door, if you go into your bus and look on each door, there should be some type of a latching system that allows the doors to be locked from the inside. There's also buzzers and things uh, in the same circuit. If the bus driver tries to start the bus with any of the doors locked, the engine won't start. And this relay is part of that interlock system right here. I've gone out and done some searching. There's a couple posts out on schoolie.net. They recommend that the way to bypass this solenoid is to take this wire and just ground it to the chassis. Now let's explain uh, what's going on here and how a solenoid works. You notice there's two large terminals here and this is part of the more than likely part of this the starting system of the bus. The solenoid is mounted to the engine bay wall with screws so that grounds this solenoid to the electrical system and there's a small wire right here. Apparently the way a solenoid normally works is if these two contacts are not connected until a current flows between this terminal and ground. And at that point, the uh, solenoid is energized and it pulls a little metal cylinder down around some coils of wire. And that energizes that and that more than likely what happens is prevents the bus from starting. I doubt very much in normal operation you would want this relay to be energized the whole time. It would heat up, get hot, and more than likely fail over time. So normally, and this by confirming what the people said on the website, by grounding this terminal right here, which would pretty much prevent this relay from triggering to stop the bus from starting. Let's just do a little test with a meter here. I want to check something out here. When the circuit is not energized, there should be no path across these two terminals. So we're going to use a meter here. And if you hear the beep, the circuit is, is basically uh, functioning. It's closed. So let's just put the meter across the terminals. And that is, so far, the correct operation. No current is going to flow between these two terminals and this, unless this wire is, uh, or if all the locks on the bus are in the open position. Now, if the locks are in the closed position, and again, this is an assumption I'm making, then this current will then flow to this wire, which will then engage the solenoid and then allow current to flow through here. So I'm assuming then and by what I heard on the the schoolie.net is by grounding this wire you're preventing any current from engaging this solenoid. So it's the engaging of the solenoid that prevents the motor from starting. What we're going to do is we're going to remove this solenoid and then we're gonna we have two different ways we could fix this we could just tape the wires and tie them up so that they'll never touch which would simulate the energy or the uh, solenoid not energizing or we're gonna put a, a terminal block on here that's not connected between the two terminals and then we can fasten these two terminals to that terminal block so that it purposely keeps those wires separated let me just check one thing. We're checking to see if the solenoid is shorted to ground. And it isn't. Notice we have no continuity between the terminals. Let's check between there and there. Okay, that isn't shorted to ground. Let's check that. Check this. Okay, notice there's no continuity on this side. 
if you hear the beep, looks like this solenoid is shorted out somehow. We're going to, in another video, we'll take this apart and analyze this. But as you can see, by touching the meter to this terminal and that terminal, we're getting a connection. That's not supposed to occur. We're only supposed to get a connection when this solenoid is energized. So it looks like this uh, solenoid is shorted out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this off we're going to mount a another terminal block and we're going to mount these two wires so this uh, terminal will never be energized which is basically the same thing as grounding this terminal you'll never have an, any type of energizing with the solenoid so let me show you how we're going to do that we're going to and again always make sure when you're working on your your uh, vehicle's electrical system that you disconnect yourself and your vehicle from the battery so we don't want any current, any possible chance of any current flowing through the system when we're working on it. So the batteries have been removed, so now it's safe to uh, work on the electrical system. We're going to we're going to remove the terminals. We'll just leave this wire hanging because it's going to remove and I've cut the end of the wire. Let's go ahead now and remove the solenoid from the uh, engine bay. So we removed the solenoid we have the two terminals. I have a two terminal terminal block here and what we're going to do is mount this terminal block in place of the solenoid. So what I've done is I've taken and drilled two small holes for uh, sheet metal screws. So what we're going to do is we're now going to mount this to the engine firewall and then I'll show you how we're going to connect the wires to the terminal block. A terminal block, and if you notice this bar across the terminal, it's actually connecting these two terminals together. So if we touch anywhere on these two terminals, you notice we get a beep, which in, it's indicating that these two terminals are connected together. We don't want that. We want these two terminals not to be connected, and we want to use this terminal block just to hold the wires away and not ever to be able to connect with each other. So how we're gonna do that is we're going to remove that uh, that jumper bar right here. Now we removed the jumper bar. Now to double check this, you want to make sure that there's no continuity between these two terminals. So we can double check that our meter's working. And you notice these two terminals are isolated from each other. So now we can safely use this terminal block to hold those two wires separate so they'll never be connected. And this was purchased, this terminal block was purchased from Amazon. So it, uh, it's metric as opposed to uh, standard imperial threads. Now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to mount our wires to this terminal block here. So because these ring terminals are somewhat larger than quarter inch, I'm going to use some washers to mount these. So we're gonna put the big washer, the first the ring terminal, the big washer, a lock washer and then the nut
Now we've mounted the wires on the terminal block. The reason why I'm doing it this way, if I happen to be wrong and the internet, uh, schoolie.net, was wrong, then I have the terminal block that then I can then jumper these two wires with the jumper bar. But for the time being, based on the information that I've read, this is the way the configuration of the wires is supposed to be. But again, I'll leave my options open in case I'm wrong. Then what we're going to do now is we'll get a little bit of uh, dielectric grease and put dielectric grease on these terminals. Contrary to what everyone thinks, dielectric grease is not conductive, it's an insulator. But what it does is by putting it on the contacts, the ring terminals, the washers, uh, the nut, and the actual terminal screw, it keeps these uh, connectors from oxidizing, rusting, which is not good for the contact. That is pretty much how we're going to, at least right now, uh, set up and bypass the door interlock safety system. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time.